So we were talking about the quality of content. So I'm curious what your thoughts are because you're dealing with brands all the time with that. The quality that you get from these cameras are unbelievable because, because they're looking at this with a mirror saying, oh, this is so me. I relate to this person. Serve, 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 sell. Content of value is so important that they're walking out saying, oh, wow, I just learned this or I never knew this little tip. Today's Real Talk is with a real leader who prioritizes being human as a leader. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this. I'm your host, Shauna Griffiths. And today's Real Talk is with a real leader who prioritizes being human as a leader. And I absolutely love that. Karen uh, Adams is with us today. She and I have known each other for some time. Um, she is a brand builder, and she's also now co-founder and partner at Powerhouse Collective Agency. So welcome to the show, Karen. Ooh, thank you so much for having me. I totally appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad to be able to do this. And folks, I will be totally transparent. We tried this once before and there was a snafu with technology and we were just laughing about the fact that Karen has been leading in the digital space in content for the bulk of her career. And it's so funny that, of course, we had that snafu in content creation. <laughs> uh, too funny, but it's okay. We got to do it again, which is yeah. fabulous. <laughs> exactly. So thanks again so much for your willingness to come back on. And, um, you know, as I said, Karen, you've been leading in the digital space in marketing for years and folks, the way we know each other. She was my client um, when she was leading at QVC. Um, you know, Karen, you've done so you did so much there. You've also been a leader at Mars and done so much else. Um, so I'd love to hear what you're doing now with your collective and, um, what you all are focusing on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's a new era for everybody. And I, you know, if I could thank the pandemic in a way, I, I, you know, if we could bring any positive out of that, we would never be sitting here in this opportunity that we had today. So I looked around, there was people that were laid off. There was people that were doing their own thing. And I thought to myself and, and my husband, um, we were just kind of kibitzing one night and we're like, when have we ever seen this amount of gold in the industry available right now? And we're talking people from Coca-Cola, Adidas, New Balance, Mars, QVC, you name it. Um, and, and all these people are seasoned pros that help build these mega Fortune 500 brands. How do we align? How do we build something together and combine our strengths? And that's what we did. Just reached out to people. We're like, we're going to launch this powerhouse collective. Who's in? Everyone, <laughs> 11 hands rose. And we're like, let's do this. And we just launched the company. Um, just saying, how do we, the, the ethos is how do we give brands and companies, whether they're small or large, access to seasoned professionals yeah. without the BS, right? Yes. So. It's just people here. I was just saying to you, I was gardening a few minutes ago. Go, oh, I got to go. How do we give people access to real humans that have done it? And the only reason we're doing it still is because we love it. So yeah. that's really what this is about. Yeah, it's so awesome. And I like, think you've, I've actually read that you said, or I, I watched you on something and about like the name actually. So talk to us about literally how you named it, what you did. Yeah, so we start socializing the idea I was starting to dabble in consulting myself and um, every single person I spoke to was like, you guys would be a powerhouse. And it was just so like slap in our face. Okay, this is the name of the company. There's no questioning. And because we have a graphic designer who's amazing, he whipped up the logo in like five seconds. He's like, you guys are my easiest client, you know, because we're like, yep, nailed it. Like, it's just because everyone's a pro. Yeah. Everything's so easy. I, you know, we, my husband and I wrote the script. And then we curated the content from our past lives and our editor made that video in like not even a day. I mean, it was just, Amazing. yeah. The just, video was so good. Like I, when I heard and, you know, not heard, but I saw you post on LinkedIn about what you were doing. I was like instantly just so happy for you. I've always been such a supporter and fan of you as a leader and just like the way you do things. And again, like the way you built that and the, the, the website looks amazing. The video is beautiful. So it truly is a great representation of what you all can do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We need to like lean in on our social strategy now. Um, and, you know, we're just, we have some clients and we're just waiting to showcase the work that we're doing. We can't wait to share that out. 
Yeah. So how should we think about the type of clients that are really like, you know, that are right for you to work with them? We take all, uh, you know, we just believe marketing is marketing is marketing. And because yeah. each of us are standing in our superpowers, mm -hmm. we can literally offer every single thing in the marketing mix. Um, some of us lean in the creative side. Some of us are more the analytical side. We, we don't turn anybody away. Um, if the, if the budget's right, uh, right. and we try to work with small businesses as well, knowing that they're just starting out. So we try to be fair, but yeah. true, truthfully at the end of the day, it could be B2B, B2C. Uh, we always believe that at the end of the day, like I said, marketing is marketing and there's yeah. humans at the end of that screen mm -hmm. or that line and we know how to move people we're in the business i sold this from somebody i don't know who to attribute it to but somebody said we're in the business of emotional transportation and that is truly oh, yeah. what we believe marketing is and branding is at the core yeah absolutely absolutely so you said something earlier which i've been thinking so much about which is so many of these people are fantastic leaders from iconic brands like world-renowned brands and yet they don't want the bullshit anymore and yeah. so i it's something that i think is really interesting because i see a lot of people where we get to certain parts of our career and it's like we either get removed from being really close to the work or there are all these layers of just it's almost like nonsense that goes on sometimes within an organization so i've often found that there are a lot of people are they're like well maybe i'm on to something else maybe it's just a like i think we can actually be beyond actually working within a corporate structure yeah i think it depends um yeah. on the personality for me i've done big corp i've done startup and then i've done my own thing yeah. um and so i can say confidently there's pros and cons to everything um i liked doing big things for big yeah. corp really like movements that you really can't get in a startup, mm -hmm. or you could, but it's it's tougher. I also like in the startup environment being scrappy and mm -hmm. understanding what it's like to get on the ground level, boots on the ground, to really respect the team. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that we learn from any level, up or down. Yeah. So I like the positive sides of that. But for me, I've always been the beat to my own drum, and <laughs> I. I need my personal freedom. For me, mm -hmm. I can't be in a box all day and sit there in an office. Like that's just my kryptonite. Yeah. Um, and I think that's true for a lot of creatives, but you're right. This is, we're at the phase of our lives where some of us are like, uh, like I'll take my husband, for example. He just went back to the uh, to corporate life. Uh, he's working for the Philadelphia Flyers now. So he's just a strategic advisor. Should we need to tap in or, you know, like a board member? Um, that works for him. Right. Uh, some people are like, I just want to design. I don't want anything else. That's what I love. And, you know, so that's their lane. So it mm -hmm. gives us the opportunity to really just delight in the work that we love to do. Mm -hmm. so for me, for the most part, I've shared with you, I call myself the brand doctor. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I could really sit down with clients when they're lost and I don't know who I am and I don't know what I'm going to be and how do I break through? And I, we get to the heart of their brand and I'm able to help them shape their why and then mm -hmm. how do we express it externally. And that's, I could do that all day long. I just, it just brings me the most joy. Yeah. And then I pass it off to, um, you know, the graphic designer or the web developer or whatever for the next phase. And we go across the full mix. Yeah. It's so great to see you doing that and truly feel enriched by being able to focus on, again, like the work and your core strengths. And it is interesting, though, as a leader, I think we go through this evolution and we're giving back and we're coaching and we're building a brand and all these kind of things. And there is an element that sometimes we can get further away from the work. Yes. Yes. So... Yeah. I, so I can, I hear you saying this is such a great solution. I think that you created for people where you can really just focus right in on that. Exactly. You know, and that's one thing from corporate America. I remember one of my, uh, person, uh, a woman on the team said, well, what do you do all day? You know? And I thought I'm leading the team. You, I remember that moment where I was removed from the work and it was a big shift. And I was like, what? 
but I realized how much it was important for me to show face as an executive representing the team um, and showcasing their work. Really, it turned from this was about me. I did this and it was all about, well, this is what the team is doing. And that really was that is a full time job. Yeah. Um, leading the people. Absolutely. And yeah. So I, I do remember that shift. And for this model, it's I get to pick and choose what I want to do. And every, every ask from every client is different. And there might be something that I'm like, you know what, I'm going to take this one. Or I might say, Sierra, you got this girl. This is all you. And so it really keeps things exciting, mm -hmm. um, which is how my brain operates. I cannot do the same thing all the time. Yeah, absolutely. When we were talking last, we were saying how I think there's a similarity that we have in the way that we approach starting something new and like again and, and just very briefly that is not always having to figure everything out and that element of jumping in so talk to us about that and how you are actually doing that with powerhouse collective yes i'm a big after thinker so <laughs> it's good and it's bad and that's why the collective is good um, because there's people who need to do what if scenarios where I'm just like, let's jump in the pool and we're going to figure it out. And if it wasn't for people like me, they would have analysis paralysis. So it's really a combination of strengths. I jump in, I go full head in. Um, and then I think, okay, now what? And that's like when the light turns on, that's when I'm capable of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, at night when you lay in bed and your all your thoughts spill out, it's kind of similar to that. I cannot start thinking until I'm in it. Oh. Um, and that's just how I've always been. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's good and bad um, to be totally transparent. But for the most part, I haven't really had too many issues with it um, because I'm a big believer that you learn as you go. I mean, mm -hmm. we make mistakes when we don't repeat them. Um, you you don't know how to do it until you're you're literally in the grind. Yeah. So I like to move fast and break things. That's my <laughs> that's my mantra. I love that. And I actually think it can be great for startups to have that type of a mentality where, again, you don't have to have everything perfectly wrapped up in a bow. Some of that fluidity and that belief in the evolution of the concept of the brand, I think, actually allows some freedom for it to almost like evolve the way it's supposed to. Absolutely. I mean, I remember the days when we used to have like a launch date of a website and people would be like, oh, the website's done. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> no, it's an evolution. It's never done. But we used to think that way. Yeah. It's the same way with a startup. You have to start somewhere. Just yeah. dive in. It's not as scary as you think it is um, in terms of LLC and, and all those things. It's it's I pretty much anybody can do it. Yeah. Um, so it's just remove the scary. Yeah. Because, you know, everything today is right before us. There's nothing we can't learn on TikTok or YouTube. And just, and just, I just tell everyone, just go after that gnawing feeling that won't go away. That is your answer. And just, just do it. It's such a great, it's so, such a great analogy. I really think it is because we can get these ideas, but it's almost like we can get in our own way by that over analysis and the what if and fear. If I put one post up, it's not perfect. Right. People will make fun of me. Well, people probably don't even notice that it's up. <laughs> right. Yes. We, we touched on this before, you know, we're so critical of ourselves, but the, the reality is, is mostly no one cares. A, B, <laughs> mostly no one's going to see it. Yeah. So that's the reality. So you have room to make mistakes. Is is our Instagram perfect right now? Absolutely not. But will it be? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it will yeah. get there. So you just have to have some grace for yourself in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So talk about your philosophy about content and that creating that content. And I know it's an extension of what you do as a brand builder, but you were really at the kind of onset of content creation with, you know, in your previous um, roles that you've had. So I'd love to hear you talk about your, your thought process or your approach to content. I think TikTok is, is showing us what we've always said, like, 10, 15 years ago, that people just want authenticity. You know, UGC is winning. 
Um, there's a reason why Instagram's panicked and they're saying, oh, you have to post, you know, three hashtags, a story in the morning, afternoon and night, and the least one, it's like, no, or no, or you could just be interesting to gain interest, right? Yeah. So for us, we used to say capture, don't manufacture. And that comes from when we were working on the national television campaign for QVC, we'd had celebrities come in and we'd have all this chit chat, banter, wonderful, rich content. And the moment we turned the cameras on, they were like, um, you know, <laughs> it's froze. And we we're like, all right, let's not tell them we're rolling. Let's just get those pure moments before the moment and the moment after the moment. And that mm -hmm. was the chef's kiss. Wow. So that's really been our ethos for, you know, I've been doing this for 27 years that the more real, the more raw, the more human, the more authentic, the, the higher the connection, the trust, and then that absolutely we saw led to conversion over time. And it's yeah. not something that you can measure immediately, but boy, does it build, you know, it builds. If I need, you know, mother's day gift ideas for my husband, I go to the rambling redhead. I've never personally bought from her, but she's become a source for me because she curates things. I like her. And I just sent it to my husband and don't, you know, he scored. He did great, you know, shopping. <laughs> and that wasn't, I've been following her for years. Wow. But I've, I've earned her respect and trust. Mm. She's super human. I don't know if That's you ever saw awesome. her. Yeah. No, I haven't, but I'll definitely look it up. It's so interesting. I think because I think a lot of brands actually, can, you named a couple of things that I think a lot of brands can have pain points around and that's the tracking and measuring, the yeah. equating it, like wanting that to be lightning in a bottle overnight. Um, and then that authenticity element. Yeah, it's true. People, sh advice we give is just be the content. You are the content. I think it was American Eagle yesterday that posted something. They said like, and I'm going to butcher this, but they basically really value their social media team. They said, here's, I think it was like seven hours and an iPhone, go create. And what came out of that was so beautiful, just human, yeah. um, without trying. They were just capturing moments. Um, and I really think people forget that. Everyone is trying to do the same exact thing and paying for it the same huge amount to try to break through, but they forget just, you have your own unique story. Um, I just hit on it earlier. Just be interesting, gain interest. Yeah. And, and you better be sure you, you better believe that if you are interesting, people will make it go for you. You know, yeah. because they will, they can't resist sharing it with their friends. They can't resist post reposting it. Um, instead of getting so hung up on pouring loads and loads and loads of money into spend. Yeah. It's almost backwards. People are saying like, they're not ready for the party. You know, they're, they're just creating spend. But then when people come, they can't deliver on the promise that they're putting out there in, in the, um, in the ad space, if that makes That's sense. Yeah, totally. It makes so much sense. That is that element. We can't forget that is we actually have to deliver on that promise. That's so key. Yeah. This, I, I always say, get your house ready for the party before you invite anybody over. <laughs> it's the same analogy. You know, you would not have a huge party in mid construction. Yeah. Uh, and like we said earlier, not that it's going to be done, but you have to have landing experiences that pay off what you're putting out there. Mm -hmm. um, and in a, in a very human way, um, that people can relate to you because they're looking at this at, with a mirror saying, oh, this is so me. I relate to this um, person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That relatability factor is really important. And the example you gave of the rambling redhead, I love that <laughs> name, is the fact that you, the way you talked about it was like, she's established herself as an authority. So there's got to be a large element that she's actually educating people through her content. And I think that's also something for as like people who are listening, brands, agency side, whatever, is remember the importance of that. I've, I've dealt with so many brands that forget the importance of that education or they want to make it happen in a much shorter time than it needs to. So I think it's something you're always educating. You can't just go right to buy this, buy that, or tell them what to do or what action, or other action to take. 
Absolutely. I would say, um, you know, serve, 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 sell. Content of value is so important that they're walking out saying, oh, wow, I just learned this or mm -hmm. I never knew this little tip um, and give them quality content of value. Yeah. And, and that's absolutely what she does. She gives you, um, you know, how to do, she like explores products and how to use mm -hmm. it. But she also gives you a peek into her her home and her life and she's super real. So I, th I always point to her as, as a great example for somebody to look at with your small or large. Yeah. Um, she now has a show on HGTV. I have nothing to do with this woman. I'm just, oh. <laughs> it's amazing what could come from somebody who just started just, you yeah. know, uh, all the content was just like this. That's the other thing. That's amazing. You know? yeah. yeah. That's such, a, such an amazing thing too, because again, I think that the quality of the content it doesn't have to be movie theater <laughs> type content, you know, again, like a lot of time it is just, and, and, and sometimes brands can all, almost over engineer that where it's like, don't overlook the value that you can make that, that you bring to the table with content that's actually more lo-fi. So I'm curious what your thoughts are because you're dealing with brands all the time with that. Yeah. Uh, the quality that you get from these cameras are unbelievable, first of all, but we always would say like, we're not producing Gone with the Wind here. You know, like <laughs> even when I try to, people come to me for quotes, I'm trying to say, let's just be as scrappy as we can because it's beautiful, the content that these cameras can, these phones can create. So the more scrappier, I think the better. Um, mm -hmm. We don't need a full production crew and a producer and lighting and there's so many hacks that you could do as a business owner. And I'd like to put this content out soon about just shooting in natural light or, you know, just little tips and tricks that we could teach along the way to help them kind of get off the ground on their own as well. If, if the budgets aren't there. Yeah. So, you know, that's one thing that we're talking about is like educating um, small businesses, how to do uh, like a DIY package for them. Yeah. I love that part because I think a lot of times, people on the brand side can almost think that, oh, if an agency or collective consultant team is coming at me, then they're just going to want to charge me through the nose and all that kind of thing. So I really appreciate you pointing out that there are a lot of us out there who are working in that capacity, who are actually trying to build something like to right size your budget and help you do what is best for you, but also can, it can be what's best for the content itself. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's part of the BS, you know, we don't have the huge <laughs> overhead. Yeah. We know how to get scrappy. We've done it. Um, just because we work for bigger brands doesn't mean that we're going to have enormous price tags. Yes. And that can be a misperception, I think too, because someone hears you, oh, you worked at Mars and you worked at QVC, or you mentioned some of these other people, Adidas and Coca-Cola, you know, executives who are a part of your collective. And sometimes people will get scared on that and think, well, I don't, I don't have a big budget. I can't operate like that. It's such a good point that you actually bring all that expertise to the table and you can help educate how to do it, you know, with, without all that money too. That's right. And you know, another part of the dream was I saw, I'm on these like Facebook community groups. I saw the younger generation saying, you know, I refuse to go in an office. I want to start my own business, but I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to charge, how to pitch. And then on the flip side, I had people coming to me for everything. And I said, you know, I'm at a point where I'm not necessarily the person to do that ask. Mm -hmm. So how do I bridge the gap between generations of leaders like me who get the work, who know how to be client facing and, pe and doers that have their feet on the ground that love the work and are hungry mm -hmm. for the work? How do I bridge the gap where everybody wins? Yeah. So part of the collective is, you know, our top layer of executives, but we're going to start layering in the people that we subcontract out um, to show that we are um, able to give executive level um, strategy and then also give you content creation or social media management at an affordable rate. Oh, that's so smart. That's so, and I love that, like, you're literally creating impact of, you know, again, for people and the brands themselves and, 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 and multiple layers of it. That's, yeah, it's a really great solution. Yeah. I would love to help. I'm just at the point in my career where I want to 
have multiple revenue streams, yeah. um, but also helps help small um, or people that are just starting out, I should say, yeah. um, that maybe be a little bit more green. How do mm -hmm. I help accelerate their career and really benefit from them as well? That's, yeah. you know, that brings me joy. Yeah. Which I think is such a testament to your leadership style and, and the way that you operate. And I, you know, again, I said this earlier about when we worked together back in the day, when you were my client, you know, I really respected you as a leader at that point. And I, you had a way that it like kept us on our toes and we actually wanted to deliver for you. We were a little afraid of not delivering for you and not because you were going to lose it on us, but it was just, you meant business. So I'm, you know, I, I would love for you to share about your leadership style, maybe something you, anything that you've learned along the way that's helped you evolve into the leader that you are today. That's actually creating this impact. That's has the mindset that you do. Well, thank you. Um, we've certainly, I have evolved as a leader. I was thrown in very young. I think I was 26 when I was a manager for the first time of a, of a small team, had no training, um, started off terrible. I was a terrible leader. Um, it, I just, I thought it was good to have strict deadlines and, you know, have pressure and all those things. Um, and it wasn't until I met the leader that changed my life and combined with feedback from my team that's when everything changed. So I, my director at QVC took me for who I was, unclipped my wings, let me fly, let me get all the glory. And it just had such an amazing impact on who I was. I wanted, like you said, I wanted to deliver for him um, because he inspired me. He believed in me. And at the time I wasn't passing it down to the oh. team. I was still operating in the way that I thought was the right way. Um, and I got feedback that the team was not happy. And so I scheduled a, uh, meetings with every single one of them. I owned it. I apologized. And I remember just making that shift of this is not, you know, I have to treat the team the way he is treating me. Mm. Um, it just, it just went off like a light bulb. And from that, and it got better and better. Like I, it wasn't a like, okay, I nailed it. You know, we make yeah. mistakes along the way. But I would say at this point in my last um, job, that was my full focus. I wanted the people on the team to love coming to work every day, to like want to be a part of this, to have a vision, to have freedom, to feel seen, heard and valued. Like that was a huge career shift for me in the last several years where that's where I've been pouring a lot of my energy um, because it meant so much to me yeah. when I received it. Yeah. So, so you saw a little taste of it uh, <laughs> back in the day. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you shared that. And I, and I hope like as the audience, you know, listen to that, you, you hit on so many things. I'm just going to break down a couple of the things. First is your ability to see that in your supervisor, air quote supervisor, I think is, again, like representation matters. And I think that, you know, again, that's part of why I'm so grateful to have you on the show and people can hear and see the way you're operating and the way your transparency and stuff, because it's like, folks, a leader can does exist this way. <laughs> and and then the second thing that I really heard that stood out to me was your receptivity. In that moment, you you said you owned it. You listened. What you also gave us a takeaway of you sat down with each one of those people. Had you not taken that approach, it yeah. would have had a completely different outcome. So I also want to honor that and call it out for those who are listening that those are elements that we have to choose to operate that way in those moments. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's this perception that... Um, you know, that could equate to weakness, wow. but I believe leaders serve. And that is our, that is our job to serve the team. Yeah. Um, and when you get to that point, that's when you know you're a good leader. Yeah. But it's no longer about you and that you just want to develop and groom and learn from people above you and below you. Yeah. Yeah. And to your point, it's kind of like we were saying earlier with a brand or with a new endeavor, you don't have to have it all mapped out. And it's not going to be like the website that you just launch one day and all of a sudden, like, this is 
the leader version of Karen. It is that evolution over time. And even to this day, you're still learning and evolving. And, you know, it's, it's kind of I, I, someone who I know speaks of it as an odyssey, <laughs> which is actually I love that because it's a journey is what I've always said. But then it's like, no, actually, it's an odyssey. It just oh, keeps yeah. going. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's so true. We're never done learning. And it's only going to get better with AI. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm taking an optimistic approach to AI today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. Today, yesterday, I was yeah. reading something where it was like all this reactions to it being like the worst thing ever. And I'm like, okay, we right. all need to just take it, you know, a little bit of a pause and not react too much. And it's yeah. fascinating because that's actually interesting because I wanted to ask you, like, in your role as a brand doctor i love that um like what what are some of these things that you're seeing maybe it's the next thing that's coming and ai obviously is is here and but there's all these questions about it um so so talk to us about in your brand doctor role what are you seeing out there yeah so the new york times came out with um a, a feature on this today and and it was so beautifully done they paneled like five experts across different industries and I listened to it twice because I was like, this is heady. This is heady. And I only picked out the things that I wanted to hear. <laughs> there is, you could go down two paths with this, like we just said. I believe that we're going, there's a lot of mundane. Mm. And we're going to automate the mundane. So we can kind of like the, the, the model of this business. So we can only... Um, improve ourselves and to to lean into the things that will really give us joy and splendor and 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 the, what we're the best at, right? So so I view a time in the very near future because it's at like seventy percent human now. It's wow. getting quickly. And to your point, there's it's a hype it's a hype thing right now. So yeah. there's the two sides. People are panicking, and then the people that are underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it's somewhere in the middle right now. And I believe that it's once it does take off, it's going to get extreme velocity. So we got to get on board. Yeah. But it's really already touching our lives um, more than we know. Yeah. And it's been around for a while. But in terms of brands specifically, I think now we're shifting from, oh, what's this AI to AI is becoming creative. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is a takeaway from this article. I'll send it to you. Um, it's the first time AI is able to help marketers like ourselves have collaborative conversations when we don't have the ability to brainstorm like we used to in an office, right? Mm -hmm. Or to help improve a thought. Mm -hmm. Or I wrote this paragraph, give it to me four different ways in um, how Steve Jobs would say it, how, you know, and you've got to really focus on how you give it prompts. And it what it can spit back to you is like, wow. Holy smokes, that would have taken me a full day. Uh -huh. um, so it's an efficiency model specifically to brand your question. Mm -hmm. It's a creative model in terms of brainstorming. And it's going to help maybe alleviate some of the things that we don't necessarily want to spend our time on. Um, like if we if we think about farmers, we most of us were farmers back in the day, and then we started using technology, and then jobs were created that were never created before like software engineers and all that and so what they were saying is um to embrace it to learn about it now and to take advantage of the benefits that it could make you either improve into your in your job yeah or just your life you know if we're not doing xyz because that's covered by by ai what can we do can we compose music can we you know and it's just from the positive lens, um, I think it's going to have a huge impact on brand and marketing for the yeah. better. And the marketers that understand it are the ones that are going to thrive. Totally. I've been thinking of that so much where it's like, it's here. It's like back in the day when we were, for, when social media was first out and everything, and it was important to be, you know, to engage in it and to learn and to figure out how to use it because look at where it's come today. So I think that's the element of it, that initial fear or panic to it, we really have to ask ourselves how much are we actually gonna get in our own way? But if we add it and figure it out, I think 
companies are starting to look for that already in their candidates. Do you have any experience with it? So, yeah. And you see it popping up all over the place. Like um, Instacart just launched a chat feature today that will help you make better purchasing decisions. I mean, it's, it's on and only about, I think, and this is that I read today, so I'm not sure if it's relevant or not, but only 14% of the population has used it yet. So it's so early days, which I love to be like, you know, it, early adopter of this. And, and I just can't wait to see where it goes. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm remaining optimistic. Cause yes, <laughs> we're in the, we're in the there. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of the, of, of the opposite. Cause again, I just think that's where it's from a place of fear. And so, you know, as yeah. we're moving things forward, we can also be part of the people who are showing, how are you using it? Again, as I was saying earlier, like about the person who was your leader and that was representation for you, it's also like, let's see people who are being responsible and aware using it in a way that actually serves us. Um, yes. And hopefully we can, you know, grow from there. Yes. The potential is wonderful of, of what it could do for us as a yeah. society. So yeah. in general. So you've just launched this new agency, agency, right? You'll refer to it as? Yeah. Okay. And, um, so I'm curious, do you, there's a lot of people out there who have started something new. They're launching a new agency consulta, con, uh, consultancy is the word I was looking for. Um, any tips aside from you don't have to have it all mapped out, any tips that you can deliver for people to help in that process? Yeah, I think um, some people struggle with self PR. Uh, and I think don't be shy. A lot of people are willing to help. Mm. So don't be shy to download your LinkedIn contact base and, and or Excel spreadsheet and say, I actually really do know this person. Reach <laughs> <laughs> out to that person. Yeah. Because a lot of people I found when I was looking for a job or my husband was looking for a job, people are so willing to help. Mm -hmm. So I would say tap into your community of network that you trust and mm -hmm. just have conversations because you'll be surprised of how much that does drum up business. Right. That's a great one. Absolutely. I think there can really be that. Sometimes I think it's fear. Sometimes I think it's like almost embarrassment of asking for help, but a lot right. of people are wanting to help and they feel it's like an honor or privilege to be able to. So that's a really great one. Yeah. I mean, you're a prime example, right? <laughs> So I, you heard about the business. You're like, let's have a podcast. There's so many people like that yeah. and all that is super helpful. And, and now I would do anything that you need. You know, it's yeah. just, it yeah. becomes reciprocal and it's really, it's really how it's like getting a job. It's networking matters in, yeah. um, in creating your own business. Yeah. So this has been so great. And we've hit on so many topics. I really appreciate it again, like your way of just being so authentic and um, evolving yourself and really standing for what I'm trying to do here with this podcast. And um, so I really appreciate the time. So again, like I said, we covered so many topics. So what would be like key takeaways for people from all we've discussed that we want, really want to make sure that people have heard? Yeah, I think the general theme of this is be open, be positive, know that you're never finished. You're always going to evolve, lean into your tribe of people um, and just ask yourself if you can, what do I love doing every day? What lights me up? What gets me out of bed? And if you focus on what you love, it will grow. Absolutely will grow. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, and I'm happy if there's anybody out there that wants to talk about anything that's holding you back, you can solve anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to offer, you know, a chat, a coffee, um, whatever I can do to pay it forward because everybody's been so kind to that's me. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being a shining example and for your time today. Um, appreciate you. And thanks for bringing your dog to the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Molly made her appearance. Thank I you love so that. much. <laughs>